Hello and welcome to the store Reza A during quarantine. <laughs> Off the hook, but the phone never rang. Beast on the beats, no claws, no fangs. So it's April. It's been two months. A lot of us have been in self-isolation for almost a month now. Today I'm gonna be talking about all the things that I read and watched during that time and right before that time. I've read three books and I've started a fourth. If you've read or watched any of the things that I'm talking about, please feel free to discuss them with me in the comments. I'd love to. Let's get right into it. Off the hook, but the phone never rang. Beast on the beats, no claws, no fangs. First book that I finished was Wayward Son by Rainbow Rowell. This was our February book of the month and I loved it. If you want to discuss it in detail, we have a book explosion live show where we discuss everything Simon and Baz Wayward Son. It's on the book explosion channel. I'll link it in the description below. I loved this so much more than Carry On because I was finally able to separate it from Harry Potter in my mind. You know, I'm such a giant Harry Potter fan that I couldn't help but draw all the different parallels and be like, oh, is this being parodying this and is this, this, is this? Because of that, I couldn't fall in love with the characters in Carry On fully. But Wayward Son was completely different and it was all about the characters and we're on a road trip through the United States and it was so much fun. The dialogue was hilarious. The interactions between the characters was great. I love the new characters. I'm so excited for the next one. I love the magic system that Rainbow Rowell is putting together. It was interesting and carry on and now I'm all in. Now that we're seeing the United States and how it compares and how magic works in this world, there's like dry spots and it's all dependent on the word usage of the people in the area. The wizards depend on muggles, not muggles, normals for their spells to work. It's all about the vernacular. And it just gets more and more interesting the deeper we go in this book. It's one of those books that just makes you happy the whole time you're reading it. It's been so long since I read A New Rainbow. I missed it. Wayward Son gets an A plus from me. What's the third one gonna be called? What is the lyric? <laughs> the next movie I watched and the last thing I saw in theaters before everything was canceled was Emma, the new adaptation of Jane Austen's novel, Emma. I have never read or seen any Emma adaptations. So this was a brand new story for me and I loved it. It was slow going in the beginning, but it was shot so beautifully and the set pieces were so beautiful that it didn't matter. It had my attention. It was acted so fantastically. I loved the actress who played Emma. I loved Bill Nye as the father. It was great. Two of the actors from Sex Education just randomly popped up in it. I was like, whoa, what are you doing here? I love the dance scene. Oh my God. I love balls in these adaptations. I love the dance in Little Women. I love how they have these pre-known dances that everyone just knows and they just keep going through all this choreography and everyone just knows it. That's so cool. I love the arc of Emma herself. It takes her hurting someone else to really see herself clearly and who she's been and who she wants to be and matching those two ideas in her head. I really enjoyed it. I'm gonna give it an A minus. I liked it way more than Pride and Prejudice, which is like the crowd pleasing fave. I do not like Mr. Darcy. He's so obnoxious in so many different ways. And I just don't see why Keira Knightley ever went to him. But this guy, he had a really kind, sympathetic side who really understood Emma and their back and forth was great. He's the one who checks her on her extreme dickishness and makes her see herself clearly and change and grow and it's great. The next book that I read in February was The Gravity of Us by Phil Stamper. This was sent to me by Bloomsbury who I've been working with this month. I had the best time reading this book. The audiobook is really good if you want to do that. So it's about this kid named Kyle. He's 17, I think, in the senior year of high school. He wants to be a reporter and he has a huge following on social media. He's got like half a million followers. He follows all the NASA news as they put together the first human team to be going to Mars. There's now a reality show centered around the astronauts that will be going on this mission to Mars. So all these astronauts, as soon as they're chosen, become the new star on this show that everyone's watching. So Kyle lives in New York. His dad has applied for a position position as an astronaut on this mission. He gets it. I mean, that's basic knowledge. It's in the synopsis. He has to relocate from New York to Houston. He all of a sudden becomes a character on this show. Like his life is being broadcasted to everyone and he's not allowed to broadcast to his audience. When he gets to Houston, he meets a guy that he likes and they have a romance. His dad is kind of struggling with being in the spotlight and being kind of in the shadow of Cal and all his followers. So there's a lot going on. There's a lot of different dynamics there that were really fun to 
explore in a contemporary novel that I had not seen before. I love anything having to do with a mission to Mars. I didn't know that was going to be what this story rotates around. That was just so exciting. If that sounds like something that you would also enjoy, definitely hit it up. It was a fun, quick, contemporary read that I blew through in like two seconds. I finished watching the first season of The Crown. It was excellent. And anyone who told me The Crown was slow, I don't know what you talk about. This show is so well done, so well written, and it feels so real because you know that these people existed, obviously, and it's based on true events. You just get this insight into their human side, you know, the lives of these people. People. Getting to see Queen Elizabeth's day to day, how the government treats her and how she was raised is just fascinating. And you become so attached so quickly. My favorite episode of season one is the one that doesn't actually center around the Queen. It centers around Winston Churchill and it was so beautifully done. It's the one where the guy comes to do his portrait. That episode was so well written. We've now started season two and I'm not liking it as much because it's about a time where Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip were having marriage issues and I don't like it. We watched two or three episodes and they've been just like really sad and slow and disconnected and I'm hoping that we work this out very soon. I don't like it like this. I've also been watching season five of Veep. Season five has by far been the best season yet. Everything's coming together finally where you're so in tune with all these characters that it's so much funnier and there's so much more going on. So many different characters are interacting in new different ways that are so fun. Veep has been a sideshow for me for a long time. John and I would watch it together every once in a while, but for the first time we're like marathoning Veep because it's finally lost a lot of the depressing aspects of it. Like for a long time you hate everyone in the show. <laughs> Certain characters grow on you and then Richard appears and Richard's the best. Now it's really moving and grooving in the least depressing way it ever has before. Season five has got an A plus for me thus far. Season four of The Bold Type just ended. It's great, it's on Freeform, so you wouldn't expect it to be as fantastic as it is because that's just been the reputation in my brain, but wow. It's so great. It's about female friendship and being in your 20s and living in New York City and navigating life, seizing the reins of your own destiny. It's great. If you haven't watched it yet, definitely check it out. It'd be a fantastic quarantine binge. It's so uplifting and so inspiring and so heartfelt. I have so many feelings when I watch the bolt type. I'd give this season an A minus. I can't decide what my favorite season has been. All of them. Oh my gosh, this is us. Season four. This is us continues to be amazing. The writers knocked this out of the park. Season four was great. It was different. We're introducing a lot of different aspects of these people's lives, but I love the way the story spans so many generations. I watched Jumanji Next Level this month, which I never got to the theaters to see. It was fun. It wasn't as good as the first new Jumanji movie movie, which I found really, really funny. This one was fun, but the jokes didn't hit as hard for me. There was two grandfathers playing and they'd never played video games before, but a lot of the actual jokes in the game were kind of already sprung on us in the last movie. So it didn't hit you as, as funny as before. I'd give this one a B. I'm the first one an A, so if you haven't seen the first one, really fun. I watched All the Bright Places this month, the adaptation. I never actually read the book All the Bright Places, but I feel like I was kind of spoiled for it and that's why I never picked it up because I knew something was going to happen to someone just like in Tiffios, I was spoiled for that. I didn't read it until right before the movie. I didn't know this movie was coming out. It just was there. And I was like, oh, I guess I'm watching it before I read it. I kind of wish I read the book because I know there's probably way more detail about so many of the different places that they went to together. I love the actor who plays the guy, Justice Smith. I think he did a great job and he's always really fun in his roles. I just feel like so much life bursts out of him whenever he's on screen. He's the one that you're like, ah, he's doing great. I'd give the movie a B plus cause it was kind of, you know, somber and sad. It wasn't the best time to be watching it in this quarantine life. Are you trying to just keep yourself in a happy place? I watched Honey Boy this month, Shia LaBeouf's film that won a bunch of awards, I feel like in indie film festivals, but I never actually saw it because it wasn't in many theaters and maybe you didn't either, but it's on Amazon Prime now if you want to check it out. Dang, I don't know if you guys watched Even Stevens, but if you did, it's fascinating to watch this film and know what you do know about Shia LaBeouf just from, you know, like 
the outskirts of seeing his career and then seeing this film, which is based on his experiences. And I think he wrote it while he was in rehab. I can't remember for sure, so don't take me at my word. But it was a fascinating look into the life of one child star. It is a sad film. So if you're looking for something upbeat, maybe not your jam today, but when you're feeling for something to give you the feels, or if you have any interest in Shia LaBeouf and you have followed him through the years like I have, I think you will enjoy it. I'm going to give it an A minus because it was rather sad. Oh my God, I finally watched Love is Blind, the hot new show on Netflix that everyone and their mother has been talking about, including 10 million celebrities. I <laughs> see talking about it whenever someone asks them, what are you binging right now? They're like, oh my God, I'm watching Love is Blind and it's crazy. It was batshit. You have to watch it if you're looking for some trash TV to take your mind off the current state of the world because it's so much fun and I've never seen anything like it. Granted, I don't watch a lot of reality shows. I've watched The Bachelor, so that's what I have to compare it to. This was crazy. What it is, is an experiment. You speed date a bunch of people through a wall. Like you cannot see them. You have, I think 10 days or less than that to figure out if you want to spend the rest of your life with one of them. And these people, they find who they think are their soulmates through these walls in the smallest amount of time possible. And then there's more to it. Like after that, they have to propose. And if you propose, you get to see each other. And then when you see each other, you get to go on vacation together and see if your love will last in the real physical life. And if it does, then you move in together. If that works for two weeks, then you get married and you have the option at the altar to be like, I do or I don't and I'll never see you again. And it's crazy. I just couldn't believe what I was seeing some of the time. I couldn't believe that this was being filmed. It was crazy. Check it out, yo. It was so much fun. I'm gonna give it an A for trash TV. I could not stop watching. Watching it. I was like, I just need, I need to finish this. I need to finish this or I'm not gonna be able to do anything. I laughed, I scoffed, I cried. I couldn't believe that I was crying when I was crying. I was like, this show is getting to me. It's getting to me. And the last thing that I watched this month was Invisible Man, which was made available on Amazon Prime because it just came out in theaters and I really wanted to see it. It is with Elizabeth Moss, the star of Handmaid's Tale. She's an amazing actress. The concept of this movie horrified me in like the most fascinating horrifying way. Even though I don't like scary movies, I wanted to watch it because it was such a compelling concept. I wanted to see June from Handmaid's Tale triumph in this situation. And boy, it was a ride. I was on the edge of my seat, but it was great. If you're looking for a scary movie, I'd check it out. It was good and so well acted as I knew it would be. I'm going to give it an A minus. And those, ladies and gentlemen, are all the things I have watched. I am watching Westworld season three. Not happy so far. I'm hoping it picks up. Season one of Westworld is an actual masterpiece. It is a perfect season. It is self-contained. And if you haven't watched that, please do. The following two seasons have been a little We'll see. We're only three episodes in. I'm hoping things start to into place a little bit. Just a little. I just need a little bit. I'm on page 60 of Crescent City, so I'm excited to finish this this month. Oh, I also read Chain of Gold this month, which I talked about extensively in a two-part, 40-minute in total book talk if you haven't seen that yet. I had a lot of fun with it, so please check it out. Please share your thoughts on any and all of the things I've discussed today, any of the things that you found that have helped you stay sane during this quarantine time. My name's Christine. I am on Twitter and Instagram, at I make videos every week and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.